going on, Tightline TV fam? I know this is a really random intro because I'm kind of like in my living room, but you know what? We're just going to ignore that. I didn't film an intro for this video. I actually filmed this video a little bit ago and never got around to posting it, so I'm doing my intro now. But you guys are about to watch a video on exactly how you can get it done this time of year for pre-spawn bass fishing. This is the time of the year for all you people in the Midwest that ponds are getting fired up, fish are getting fired up. So I'm gonna show you guys my favorite pre-spawn baits, exactly how I fish them, and uh, all the ins and outs when it comes to fishing them in particular. So I think you guys are really gonna like this video. And without further ado, enjoy this video of me slamming some bass let's get it if you guys can see right here i have quite a few rods in my truck right now and i'm going to show you guys exactly how i go about fishing this time of year if you guys don't know much about pre-spawn or spring fishing it's that it can be one of the most frustrating times of the year honestly i don't think there's too much information out there when it comes to like the guys who aren't on those main bodies of water. There's not a ton of information on those kids who are just pond hopping this time of year. So, you know, when I was younger, I was always looking for information on how I could catch fish in ponds because that's all that I had access to. So I'm gonna bring, I think, four or five rods with me and show you guys four or five baits that are gonna get it done for you this time of year, no matter what. So this should be fun. We're gonna, we kinda gotta walk to the lake, but we're gonna go over to the GoPro and uh, hopefully catch some fish. So before we get started, I'm going to show you guys the setups that I have right now. I'm just going to talk about baits because that's going to be one of the more important things to know right now. So as you guys can see, I got four setups right here. I have one setup with a lipless crank on it, one setup with a spinner bait on it, another setup with a chatter bait on it, and then the last one I got is like a glide type bait. So I'm going to stick to these three baits right here. If you guys know between the lipless crank, the spinner bait, and the chatter bait, there's one thing that all those baits have in common, actually two things, and that is that one, they are moving baits and you can cover a lot of water with them, and two, they imitate bait fish. This is what I've learned when it came to pond fishing this time of year. Lakes have a lot more laydowns. They have a lot more ecosystem. They, they have just rocks, logs, they have just about everything where you can change it up and you know the fish get a little more finicky and you can find a different bite. Now when it comes to fishing ponds, nine times out of 10, when you're fishing like a farm pond, a golf course pond, or something like this right behind me, you don't have that stuff. You pretty much have aerators, vegetation, and lily pads that's about all you'll see and because of this I found out that you know times of the year like this fish just tend to relate to those bait fish they don't get down in the dirt they don't you know get in looking for crawdads and stuff like they might in a main lake I've just been most successful fishing moving baits and trying to cover a lot of water so we're gonna pick up a rod we're gonna go for the GoPro and uh, hopefully catch some fish alrighty guys so I am going to start off with the lipless crank and the reason I like to start using a lipless crank is because you can just cover a ton of water. You can pretty much fish a lipless crank how you want it. You can burn this thing on top of the water. You can jig it. You can fish it high in the water column, low in the water column. It's just a great way to cover water. And guys, the main reason that we're focusing on covering water, especially this time of year, is because these fish are just all over the water column. It's pre-spawn. If you guys don't know what pre-spawn means, that means it's the time period before these fish move into mating season or into the spawn. If you guys don't know what the spawn is, it's where fish make their babies. So what happens is you got males coming in shallow because they're getting ready to make these beds for these females to come get frisky and lay their eggs on but a lot of times you'll find fish up shallow you'll find fish deep and especially when you get you know weather where it's warm one day cold the next and if you guys are from the midwest you'll know exactly what i'm talking about so i'm just gonna burn this guy I'm casting it straight out there in the middle. I'm not hugging the shoreline because the shoreline's super, super shallow over here. But, uh, boom. There we go, guys. There's a fish already, third cast. There we go. Oh, come here, bud. Sorry, 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 sorry. Uh, simmer down. I don't want you to get all grassy. I'm gonna get this guy right back in because he's full of grass. And I'm gonna try and... See, boom. There we go, guys, <laughs> right off the bat. I'm telling you, this is the way. I always start fishing in the springtime. I'm not gonna get cocky like I'm gonna lay them out, but that's already one fish on the lipless crank. And uh, yeah, we're gonna keep it going. I think I literally was like third cast. <clears throat> Do not be afraid to burn this thing. I keep my rod tip up, and uh, I'm actually using a really fast gear ratio reel right now. This is a seven to one burner, so it's a pretty fast reel. And, I'm cranking this thing in. These fish are fired up this time of year. They're gonna eat.
There's another one. There we go. Not a bad little fish. They keep flapping off. I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. You guys are going to hate me. I'm like the worst fish handler today. I'm going to come get you, bud. Oh. Ah. Ay, ay, ay. All right. Two fish already, guys. You see that? Right here on this lipless crank right here. I actually got this lipless crank in my mystery tackle box. So again, shout out mystery tackle box. And uh, they're always putting good juicy baits in there. Here we go. So we moved down a little bit, guys. And uh, again, we're just focusing on covering water. Just keep throwing that bait. Try to get as many casts in as you can. Walk down that shoreline and just cover water. When you're fishing a lipless crank like this, you guys, don't just keep reeling it all the time. Always change up the action on it. They got loud rattles in there, they're noisy. Those rattles are gonna get those fish fired up. So sometimes I like to reel this thing and jig it, or pop it I should say, and just keep it moving, just keep it moving. Get these fish fired up and make them wanna eat it. Now, I don't know if you guys can see because I have a GoPro on, but uh, there's actually an aerator out in front of me. Aerators are a major go-to when it comes to ponds. If you have a pond that has an aerator in the middle or a fountain, a lot of times your bait fish resort right in around those things. So I always make a good effort to throw my bait right around that aerator as much as I possibly can because a lot of times you pick off a good fish. There's a fish right there. Guys, pond fishing can be so darn fun. Come here. Boom. A little doink, but hey, a fish is a fish. That was a big one, guys. Do you see that? Do you see that whale? I just, he, he just missed it. He came in, whale. What did I say that? Is that, is that right? Is that correct, whale? When you, that's not right. Whirl, whirl maybe? Dang, right out of the aerator, I'm telling you guys. He followed it right in. I'm gonna slow it down and see if he, I mean, he swiped it, he just missed it. Dang, that was a good fish, guys. Holy cow. That was probably a three pounder right there. I just missed. Might be the best one yet. Nope, just just a hard fighter. Probably about the size of the first two. Oh, no, that might be the best one yet, guys. Yeah, we'll say it is. The only thing that's barely hooked. There we go, guys, nice little pine largey. there by shore boom and I was jigging that if you guys didn't notice that time whoop -a, baby come here oh you buddy had a little uh little attack there or something huh see that guys looks like a bird or something got a nice little chow or maybe a snapping turtle I don't know if you guys look at this gill plate right there it's literally missing I'll let you I'm not gonna throw you back. I'm gonna just give you a little flop. Man, he's kicking hard for uh, not having much of a gill left, but hey, whatever. Keep trucking, little buddy. Grow bigger. You'll be all right. Boom, baby. This is the best one yet right here, guys. Again, not, not giants, but look at this guy. Look how fired up they are. You guys see how hard they're trying to fight me right now. Ooh, baby. 
come here it's the best one yet we're making progress in the bigger fish all right i always get so sketched out <laughs> grabbing a fish like this actually uh, you want to know why i'm sketched out guys i'll show you a clip here right now ow that was great all right this is not good i got two barbs in my hand Well guys, that'll do it early. Yeah, so that wasn't fun. So I always make sure, I know some of you guys might not be all happy about me grabbing a fish's body instead of its mouth, etc. But when they shake, it can be a disaster. And uh, me, I don't like disasters. <laughs> the best fish yet so far. Only about a pound and a half or but something like that. They're in here though, they're in here. You gotta weed through the little ones to find the big mama, right? I think that's how that works. All right. And actually what I'm gonna do now here, guys, is I'm gonna keep working this bait, but I'm gonna change it up. Now this is working for me great. Uh, I'm not having any complaints about throwing the lipless crank, but just for the sole purpose and showing you guys how to catch fish, maybe uh, you don't have confidence behind. There's another one right behind. Oh, he came off. Wow. They're on top of each other over here. A lot. I can't believe that guy popped off. So I'm gonna start walking my way back to where I put my rods at and uh, I'm gonna grab a different bait. And eventually we're gonna change sides of the pond and we might resort back to this bait because it is working very well. But let's go change baits just to show you guys a little more, a little more something. Okay guys, so I'm gonna put down the lipless crank. It's working great, but say you guys didn't feel comfortable fishing a lipless crank or you didn't have confidence behind it or maybe you just hate lipless cranks, I don't know, or maybe it's not working for you. Maybe that presentation was too fast and uh, you know, we're gonna go and uh, it just wasn't working out for you. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna get another moving bait, one of my favorites. Right here we got a spinner bait. Now similar presentation, bait fish except for this right here this guy's imitating a school bait fish versus a singular bait fish which that one is this bait's gonna allow you to get out there still cover a ton of water have a little bit wider bigger presentation and uh, this guy we're kind of just gonna slowly roll it through the water column I've been having this issue lately where my eyelets keep chipping and they're just fraying my my line and I don't know I don't know about you guys but uh Having frayed line does not help you catch fish, I'll tell you that much. Bump, bump, bump. Now the spinner bait, you can get a little more shallower. You can get into a, a little bit heavier cover because that, them blades will break right through them weeds. So I like to take the spinner bait and throw this guy literally on the shoreline when I get the chance as I'm walking my way down the pond. You can throw it out there too. Spinner bait, I'm throwing on a little bit slower of a reel. This reel I actually tend to use for like square bills and cranks like that. This is a six to four gear ratio reel. And uh, there's a fish right there. Boom. And yeah, it just allows me not obviously to crank fish or crank this bait through the water a lot more. Those fast gear ratio reels you guys want to use with like jigs and rubbers and stuff like that rubbers that kind of sounds bad i mean uh <laughs> plastics i'm gonna slide i know buddy i know buddy i don't want don't wiggle oh or that's just gonna come out like that all right hmm come to papa Right there guys, and that is exactly why you fish a trailer hook. If you can see right there, all trailer hook, baby. Caught me that fish. Voila. Oh, okay. <laughs> ah, that, see what I mean guys about this eyelet? Yeah, I don't trust this rod. Uh, <laughs> that's not good. Okay, well, I'm gonna tie this back up and uh be glad that that didn't just happen on that fish 
and uh, I don't know, keep on trucking, I suppose. All right, y'all, we're gonna put down the spinner bait here now. If you guys didn't notice, I caught a lot less fish on the spinner bait than I did the lipless crank. Now, why is that? Well, I don't know. Maybe I just didn't have it in the same places or the fish, you know, I just didn't get in front of their face. I don't know what the reason is. But my theory here is having a bait that has just a little more going on tends to trigger fish this time of year. So if you notice, spinner bait's a great presentation and this is a bait that I always bring with me. You can cover a lot of water with it and uh, it does really well in those overcast windy days and things like that but having a bait like this where it's got that rattle in there just really fires those fish up so what we're going to do now is we're going to switch over to the third bait i brought and that's going to be that chatter bait now this chatter bait has a similar presentation to the spinner bait it's got the skirt it's got somewhat of the same imitation but instead of having a blade on there and kind of just rolling through the water this has a vibrating blade or i don't know what to call it to be honest with you guys it's just it's a chatter bait so this is a little bit noisier it's a little bit more commotion but it's a similar presentation so i want to see you know I have a feeling that these fish are going to produce better on this bait right here just because of you know the, that little bit more of commotion going on. I have terrible vocabulary but I think you guys understand what I'm trying to say. So if you guys see this, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll tip a chatter bait with you know like a, a swim bait or something like that, like a paddle tail but I'm actually gonna tip it with a Guggen Baits Crack and Crawl right now. This Crack and Crawl is actually super sick. I really like these baits and they have a good swimming action. So we're kind of imitating a crawl here. So somewhat of a different type of forage, but it's gonna do the same thing. We're just gonna cast this guy out there. You can kind of do what you do with the chatter bait when it comes to like jigging it and stuff. But for the most part, I'm just gonna have a steady retreat. But this guy has just a gnarly vibration to it and it causes a little more commotion. So I'm gonna cast this guy out here and I'm gonna walk the edge, cover a little more water, and uh, see if it produces a little bit better than that spinner bait. There's, oh, I just lost a fish right there, guys. Gotta be kidding me. First cast with it already. Such a subtle bite that was. He was just like, mm, maybe I'll eat it. He nipped the, the crayfish. Oh, do you see that right there? He's sitting right down there. Watch, I'm gonna throw this. The nice thing about the chatterbait, you can almost like, watch this. I'm gonna pop it. That fish is ready to eat. He's gonna get it, I'm gonna get him. That sucker. <laughs> I've watched him twice come up and grab it now. He's not a big one, but uh, he came right up from the bottom and just wailed it. This is another bait, guys, that you can throw in and out of veggies. You can get it up and around cover if you do or if you are fortunate enough to have a lot of cover in your pond, this is a great bait to just bump off of logs and things like that. And it maintains a pretty good weedless approach for the most part. I mean, it's not like a weedless hook, but it seems to just avoid getting grass all over it and stuff. First chatterbait fish, not a bad one. Annihilated it. Man, these are a lot of, what do you call these? One, one pound baggers or whatever. Wouldn't be a heavy bag today, but we'd have the quantity there. But already guys, I, I feel just 10 times more confident in this bait because it's got that gnarly vibration. You're getting the same exact presentation as the spinner bait with the skirt and everything like that, but it's just a little bit more noisy, a little bit slimmer, and uh, I think these fish are just gonna like it a little bit better. Just kind of fires them up. They're like, mm, let me get a piece of that. I, I keep looking back at that spot from that first fish. I just like, mm, man, it's just like taunting me. He just sits there and missed it three times. I gotta keep casting over there. I, oh, oh, that was a good fish right there. Wow, you guys see that wake? Let's see if he'll come back on it. That was a darn good fish. That right there was the biggest fish of the day. For sure. No doubt about it. There, oh, you guys gotta be kidding me. 
I just missed another one. The amount of fish that I've missed today. Oh, come on, Sally. Come on, Sally May. Man, come on. Oh, my mama mia. Guys, if I had a dollar for every time I missed a fish today, I could buy one of y'all dinner. I think that fish, I just, I actually think I just lost the trailer on that fish. No. Okay, just so you guys believe me that I was getting, getting bit and keep missing them. You see this? You see this, y'all? This is a crack and crawl without any claws. <laughs> We're gonna keep fishing it like this, see if I can get one more fish, but I knew something bit it. Someone got a little taste of something over there. Well guys, there you have it. Thank you so much for tuning in with me and watching me miss, you know, just about every fish in the pond. Oh man, but for real, we went out there, I showed you guys a few moving baits to get on some fish this time of year. Now, let's say these baits didn't produce for me at all. Then you guys might ask the question, well, what do I do? That's where I would go into something like this, that bait that I brought. I would go into like a jerk bait or a glide bait, which is a bait that still has that loud presentation. It's got those rattles in it, but it allows you to kind of just work the water column you know, at a lot slower pace and it allows you to put that bait in the strike zone for a little bit longer. Because what you're doing is you're gonna pop, pop, pause, and uh, the fish have a lot more time to react to it and strike to it, etc. So I would start with like a jerk bait if you guys weren't producing on the moving baits and if that really didn't work, that's when you go into your finesse baits and you start working the bottom and start flipping jigs and things like that. I hope all you guys have a great day. Get out there, keep fishing, grind hard, and get on some fish. Thank you guys so much, we'll see you later.